Hello everyone, this is update for April 18, 2024, day 785 of the war, end of the date update. Also catch up for April 17 and 16. So I'm going to start with a general strategic uh, news update uh, and specifically that Ukraine is getting funding uh, from the US. It's actually going to be 60 plus million, uh, sorry, billion. Um, not 48 uh, the the way I stated uh, before uh, there was a little confusion there um, um, because it essentially um, that was referring to basically indirect help for you uh, to Ukraine what this really means is that Ukraine is getting weapons from the inventory of the US Army uh, and then that inventory is going to be replaced by placing orders with the producers, right? So what this really means is, is this essentially uh, U.S. is going to be getting new equipment and uh, giving uh, old equipment uh, to Ukraine. And that's really how the whole scheme works. And the rest of it is going to be more direct help to Ukraine uh, with actual funding. Uh, being under control of Ukraine and, and at full disposal of Ukraine. So as you can see, out of 60 million, only 12 million, really what Ukraine is getting in actual real funding. Uh, <clears throat> so having said that, uh, there is a uh, part of it is actually this funding is uh, debt, uh, which I'm not sure what's the logic there, but... Um, for those who are new viewers, this is I showed this uh, in the past. It was uh, March 10th, uh, and Ukraine is rated as double C uh, by uh, the Fitch, one of the three major credit rating agencies. And what this really means is that, uh, as you can see, actually, it really ex explains here that default is imminent with little prospect. Uh, for recovery. So in in plain language, what this really means is that Ukraine uh, is heading to default for default, and it's probably going to happen sooner than later, and I would say probably sooner. Uh, and then uh, ability to recover uh, by the creditors will be very limited. So uh, you're probably going to get back 10, 20 cents for every dollar uh, you, know, you borrow to Ukraine. So um, <clears throat> uh, the reason I'm saying this is because it's extremely illogical what's being done. Uh, Ukraine is not, you know, totally uh, country destroyed by war. There's no ability really to repay any debts. And uh, the, the question of default uh, on the debts uh, will, I'd say, will rear its ugly head pretty soon. Uh, because it's simply unsustainable. The amount of debt that Ukraine has, I think it's roughly $150 billion. Uh, it's simply giving the level of destruction in the country where the economy is. Um, and there's no prospect of repaying that debt by any means. Not to mention that Ukraine is not even uh, a you know, complete country at this point. This is assuming even if, let's say, Ukraine manages to capture, recapture, or liberate lost territories, uh, the the prospect of paying off that is close to zero anyways. Uh, <clears throat> and right now, it's really actually, the conversation is about Ukraine's survival. There is not even, you know, question about liberating uh, all of the territories, uh, at this point, as everybody knows, the, the situation is pretty dire. Um, so, uh, there another point about this uh, financial, um, I guess, debt, um, is that it's actually not going to solve the problem. The root of the the root of the root cause of the problem is really not about the money, because uh, Ukraine. Uh, has money to actually invest into the equipment, into changing the organization, the army, and so on. It's, I mentioned that uh, Ukrainian Central Bank holds roughly uh, 40 billion uh, US dollars at its disposal. 
that can be used uh, for the war effort. Uh, the problem is uh, really um, incompetent Ukrainian uh, political and military top. So what this really implies is this money will simply um, postpone inevitable. They not gonna change the situation and things uh, will not change because the, the change needs to come from within uh, and really the, the change that's needed is uh, of revolutionary level. Uh, there is no evolutionary uh, options left for Ukraine. Uh, and without those changes, the, the general population will vote with their feet. So because effectively, Ukrainian government got, got um, no from Ukrainian population, from Ukrainian citizens at this point. Uh, and, and I want to give perspective on this situation. At first, Ukrainian population, Ukrainian citizens fought for their own country, not for, not for the government represented by the people that are in the government. Uh, and that was initial uh, period of that fight. Uh, eventually, most of the people become disillusioned by uh, Ukrainian government and they started realizing that things, you know, the status quo remains and things not going to change. And so they vote with their feet running um, towards west, crossing the border, going through all of the troubles to cross the border. Uh, and that's really the answer where things are heading if you would like to understand, is simply look what people do in mass, and in mass they don't they don't want to fight; they want to uh, run away. Uh, and that's not because people are bad or something wrong with the people. No, the people they people you know you cannot fool everybody, and that's really the situation uh, in Ukraine uh, that Ukraine government cannot. You know, obviously, fool all of the people in Ukraine and those who, uh, you know, can think and 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 sort of value their life and their freedom. They they don't want to uh, support the system that does not help, does not uh, allow them to realize their freedoms, uh, and that's really um, the answer to the future. And as I mentioned before. That's one of the main reasons why Ukraine is heading towards 1917 moment. Um, unless, obviously, Russia captures all of the Ukraine, uh, and that really will, will eventually, Russia will head to that 1917 moment as well. It's just a question of time. And obviously, Russia is a larger country and so on. So having said that, I'm going to switch to the situation on the battlefield. I'm going to do a walkthrough uh, in a clockwise fashion, the, the way I always do. So the situation along the state border remains more or less the same. Uh, no imminent threat, no imminent uh, Russian uh, invasion there, not even close at this point. Although the organizational structure is, is there at this point, as I mentioned before. Now let's move to the North Luhansk uh, section of the front line. Um, I mentioned before, this is strategic dead end for both sides. Uh, and for that reason, there is not really much uh, going on right now on, on this section. It's uh, um, mostly reconnaissance missions by both sides, mostly Russian side, to be fair. Uh, now let's move to uh, North Donbass uh, front line. Uh, things here are uh, pretty hot, as everybody knows. So. Uh, first, um, it looks like a Russian command decided to capture this town Siversk, so essentially uh, eliminate this, um, call it salient or peninsular, essentially they want to cut it off because it's kind of really overhanging over the flank and, and really creating you know risks with further advances towards the west. So they kind of need to eliminate this uh, Siversk, uh, whatever we call it, salient or peninsular, and then to be able to uh, continue advancing across uh, this uh, freshwater channel towards west. Um, so for that reason, we see this kind of primitive squeeze type of attacks here, nothing 
sort of no new breakthroughs, no new advances in tactics or strategies, pretty pr primitive peasant type of attacks by Russian army here. Uh, this is just a catch up for the past advances of the Russian troops here. Uh, now let's look at the sort of more uh, southern part of this sector of the front line. Uh, the Russian troops continuing their attacks. Uh, now they attempting to uh, capture this village Kalinivka in order to cross uh, the channel north of uh, Chesiv Yar. So basically a uh, typical strategy of pincers. So southern, they already started kind of building and advanced along that line. And then they now try to create the northern one and eventually squeeze Ukrainian troops out of CVR. So the strategy is pretty stra straightforward, nothing uh, nothing unusual, nothing surprising here. And um, in normal situation, given how um, slowly Russian army is moving, how they slowly uh, slow at executing this whole idea and it's becoming very obvious, uh, the sort of properly trained and organized army would be able to defeat this whole idea just because of the uh, poor execution of the Russian army. But uh, in case of Ukraine army, because it's not able to do any uh, active defense, it's totally rigid. Uh, and so this allows Russian army to actually execute on their plans because uh, from many um, uh from many soldiers on the front line, they 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 basically say that the only command is uh, hold the ground at any cost, don't move, don't retreat, and, and so on. So basically, uh, this is the how it translates at the level, uh, at the sort of average soldier level. It's essentially uh, stand the ground. You're not gonna help. You're not gonna get help in most cases. Uh, there is very, very low, limited opportunities for evacuation of the wounded. So basically, you kind of like a left um, to 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 slow the advance uh, of the Russian troops, which is obviously uh, basically a suicidal mission. Essentially, you either become dead or you become a prisoner of war or uh, you become wounded and with the chance of survive a prisoner or becoming dead further so this is um, you know very sort of negative prospect for every soldier and really demoralizes because you effectively not controlling your future you already you know you know your destiny uh, it's obviously uh, absolutely demoralizing i would say uh, now let's move uh, south. Let's look at what's going on uh, at the central Donbass front line. Uh, things here are also slowly moving for the Russian side. They continuing their advance, and most of the focus uh, here they they pushing towards this uh, village uh, Cheratene, uh, and then also in this area it's called Keramik and so on. So the 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 logic here is that Russian um, troops need to uh, get around this uh, this lakes. So one of the paths is obviously north of them. The other one is uh, towards south. But they <clears throat> there's a lot more ground here in the south. So they kind of trying to advance where it's where it works essentially. Because in this, in some ways uh, Russian attacks are more like a, mm, like a water finding the um, you know pass of least resistance it's effectively <clears throat> uh, so far russian advances uh, to the south has really bogged down in meaningful way uh, no major advances here in krasnohorivka or uh, uh, west of marinka or in novomikhailivka i'm not saying that things are stab stabilized there it's just for now <clears throat> russian troops were not able to make uh, meaningful advances here now let's move to the Zaporizhia front line. Uh, things here are fairly quiet. It's uh, the only area where there is some Russian pressure. This village Rozhaina, basically this village Novosilka, where Russian troops lost ground <clears throat> in the summer of 23. 
so they trying to a little bit regain uh, again this is not a major area of application of forces by for the Russian command this is more of a distraction uh, preventing Ukrainian command from bringing any you know pulling any reinforcements from this area so this is really the goal here otherwise this section of the front line is again also not strategic for Russian side and not the main one so things relatively quiet here uh, now let's finish with the uh, last section of the front line along the Dnipro river uh, things here also remain the same status quo uh, ukrainian bridgehead remains there uh, no meaningful uh, strong efforts by russian side to eliminate so basically both sides kind of like coexist in so in in some very unusual way almost like you can say it's a funny war in some ways um that's all for today thanks for watching and until next time bye bye